if we break it down precision fermentation so we all know fermentation if we think of you know sourdough kimchi mm -hmm. beer that's taking a, a you know a food and then and then changing the properties of that food using a microorganism um if we look at beer it's 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 a yeast normally um and and you know baker's yeast for for, for sourdough um and then the the precision maybe we should talk about the biomass fermentation as well just at sure. that point so yeah. we've got traditional fermentation we all know beer sourdough mm -hmm. kimchi things like that biomass fermentation is is doing a, the same fermentation process except the, the the product that you're consuming is actually the the microorganism that you're growing interesting so like corn exactly corn with a q yeah um yeah so that 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 they do a fermentation and then the the microorganism then they transform into the corn uh plant-based mm -hmm. meat yeah and folks may remember that regular listeners i had paul shapiro on who owns a company in america called better meat co and they're they're doing the same thing as or similar thing to corn i think with different microbes exactly but, but producing uh, a similar sort of product yeah exactly so then we have precision fermentation and and in precision fermentation we are, are using the microorganism of choice and and there are a whole you know there are literally millions of types of of microorganisms but really we're, we're down to a quite a select list because there's a select list that are, are generally recognized as safe for human mm -hmm. consumption um, things like the baker's yeast that we use to make our sourdough we can then use that as we call it a cell factory so we're using the the cell as a factory to produce the product that we want, and and in OG Foods case, it's it's dairy protein. So we we give the genetic information uh, to make a dairy protein. We give that to a microorganism, mm -hmm. let's say a yeast, and then we tell the yeast to make the protein for us. So let's just take a couple steps back and walk through that. Yeah. So when you say you give that genetic information, is that the the sort of protein? DNA sequence. Yeah. So it's it's the DNA sequence and and you don't have to go and and take, you know, any any cells from a from mm -hmm. a cow. We 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 know the amino acid sequence of all of the proteins in dairy and mm -hmm. from that amino acid sequence you can work backwards and 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 reverse I guess transcribe that into a DNA sequence and then it's that DNA sequence that we then synthesize um by, you know, like basically making doing a chemical, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a chemical reaction to make mm -hmm. the DNA sequence. And then we take that DNA sequence and insert it into the, into the genome of, of the microorganism. Okay. And before, when you were talking about the casein micelle, yeah. was that to better understand the sequence? It was better to understand the structure of the casein micelle mm -hmm. so that we can then, I guess, understand how dairy functions like it does. Mm-hmm. So you you take this informa information essentially, exactly. this sequencing, and you encode it or insert it into the microbe. Exactly, we insert it into the microbe. Okay, so and this is done in a kind of uh, brewery type setup. A very 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 small scale test tube set up okay so, so basically you can make the 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 microorganism a little bit leaky so it's it's still alive but mm -hmm. the the cell wall that kind of protects it is a little bit leaky and then it's able to take up the the, the dna sequence mm -hmm. and then you give it a little heat shock um and then it closes back up and then and then it integrates that piece of dna into, into the genome okay and at that point so this organism basically this information goes into it, it takes that information and it starts to produce the proteins. Yeah, there's kind of two ways. So so generally we provide a, a switch to, to turn on the production of the protein. Because this protein isn't a native protein, generally they're not very happy about making them. And so what we do is we grow enough of the, 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 the cells first and we get them to a point where we've got enough cells, so we've got now we've got, you know, hundreds of millions, billions of cellular factories ready to make our product. Mm -hmm. we, then, we then tell them, we, we turn the switch on and say, right, make our product now. And then they start producing the proteins. 